welcome to another episode of Office Hours. I'm delighted today to welcome some great friends and local authors, uh, Noelle Alex and Angela Martin. Um, if you haven't picked it up yet, Just Kate is one of the best books I've ever read about <laughs> awesome. family, friends, hope, and the power of friendship. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're here today to talk about the book. They're here to talk about their experience and uh, inspire you to pick up the book um, that I finished this summer. And welcome, Noelle. Uh, welcome, Angela, to Hi, John. the show. Thank you, John. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much. This was uh, a must-read, and actually, my sister um, stole it from me. Oh. So thank you for bringing copies along. Um, but I plan to give them uh, as gifts this holiday season. Um, who's Kate? Um, Kate is my middle daughter, uh, who's now 16 at some spray high school, who um, was born 16 years ago with Down syndrome, unexpectedly. Um, she's my middle of three daughters, who I thought would be, um, at her birth, kind of a quiet, placid child, and what I got was um, the antithesis of that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a fiery criminal is what I call her. Yes. <laughs> Yes, she, uh, she's quite a fiery, funny soul, and it's my great pleasure to call her my friend. Well, you guys have been lifelong friends. You met uh, in childhood, at, uh, and it's told in, this, in the book, in Wappingers Falls, right? Yes. Yeah, a small town in upstate New York, um, known, I guess, known not for much. Um, IBM. IBM. It's sort of IBMville. <laughs> but we had a wonderful childhood. We grew up, we went to a Catholic grade school, St. Mary's. We went on um, to high school, college. Um, we even met overseas when we did a semester abroad yes. um, together in college. And by luck would have it, we both married men from West Hartford. And I went to, uh, coincidentally, I went to high school with uh, Noelle's husband, and we went to the same college, and I don't think we crossed paths. No, we didn't. We but, didn't. Uh, it's a blessing that our paths are crossing now. And uh, your story is so much about friendship and women, uh, girls growing into women mm -hmm. and planning a life um, that's, that's storybook. Mm -hmm. we, all, uh, we all know the phrase, life is what happens when you're making other plans. So um, the book starts uh, pretty incredibly with, with you giving birth and the journey of um, being surprised by this, by this experience. But uh, tell us how you grew into it and how the exchange between you and Angela um, helped you through. The... Um, it's funny you say life happens when you're making other plans so because true. I <laughs> was making other plans. I, um, I was living, we were living in Manhattan. I was working at a large law firm. I had my first daughter, went on to have my second daughter, expected everything to go just as planned. I was 28, 29 years old when mm -hmm. I had Kate. Um, I knew at the moment of her birth that something was different. Um, and it certainly took me by surprise. I didn't know anybody with Down syndrome. Um, so um, those first few days were very difficult. Um, my family descended upon me, which was wonderful. Um, Kate was healthy, which was also great news. Um, and they kind of, my family landed on me. Mm -hmm. And then after about two weeks, I needed everybody just to go. Mm -hmm. And I needed to move forward with my new life. And at that day, I received um, only one card in the mail, and it was from Angela. And Angela wrote me a message on the inside cover of the card. Um, and in particular, one line, it just resonated just really deep within me. It said, most people never know their true mission in life, but how ca lucky Catherine is she knows hers. She was born to give love, receive love, and teach us all. Mm. And those words, I read them over, I read them over, I read them over. And I read her card probably 10 times that day, and I picked it, I put it in my bedside table, and I read it every time I was frightened for the future. I was um, scared, I was sad, I was emotional, and it just made me feel better. Um, Angela happened to be the smartest friend I ever had, so I don't know why, but those words, because she believed them, it made me believe them. Mm -hmm. I never told her what her card meant to me until many, many years later. And at that moment in my life, I had a newborn, uh, my baby son, John, my second son as well, my second child as well, um, was born six weeks before Kate. And it was really a crossroads for me where it was this questioning of um, why did Kate come to Noelle and not to me? Because it could have been me. Sure. This could have been my child. It, it could have been my life as easily as it was hers. So 
I'm a writer, and intuitively, I just began to write. Um, I just, all of my thoughts, all of my questions, and I ultimately landed on the notion that Kate came to us for a reason, that there had to be a purpose in it, and that someday we would understand why. And I wanted to reach out to Noelle. Um, I was taught to respect people's privacy, and I wasn't exactly <laughs> sure. Um, you know, do I pick up the phone? I wasn't exactly sure, sure what to do, but I wanted to reach out to her desperately. And so I decided to sort of consolidate some of my writing. When I write, I write a lot, <laughs> many, many pages. Yeah. Um, so I consolidated my thoughts, and I wrote those um, thoughts to her in that baby card. And I had no idea what it meant to her for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been tough as a close friend uh, when a situation like this happens. You don't know, uh, sometimes even close friends don't know how to respond or, or how to act. Yes, it's so true, yeah. but I think what we learned in all of this is how important it is to reach out. That that's a huge role of being a friend, however that is. I mean, however, maybe... I to say, I don't know what to say. But I love yes, you. Yes, right. Yeah. Or to show up with an Irish soda bread or, or whatever, you know. Or whatever. a bottle of wine, whatever, or it, whatever is. it is. <laughs> exactly. Like just, I think that's the lesson, show up. Yeah. The, um, the book in and of itself, without, with respect, without you, oh, would yeah. it, well, your story is pretty interesting. But how did it come to you to decide to write it um, sort of as a friendship book as well? How did you... Um, where you're kind of talking back and forth, that sort of letters to each other. And um, yeah, it's a dual memoir, so the book is written in my voice and in Angela's yes. voice. Mm -hmm. um, and it tells both our stories parallel. Um, we started, um, well, it was going to be a magazine article. It was going to okay. be a magazine article mm -hmm. about when I was visiting my parents in New York. Um, Kate, Kate was full of it. Um, pretty much all the time, and they say, "Oh, give me another Kate story." They wanted to hear whatever story again, you know, whether she, you know, where she escaped, whose house she broke into, whatever she was up to. And um, I'm like, "But they had heard them a hundred times." They're like, "You have to write these down." So I was driving home, and I called Angela. I'm like, "You want to help me write a really funny magazine article? Not something sweet and sappy. Yeah. How this child changed my life." Just a funny day in the life of a funny child. And so Angela, being my good friend, said yes. And uh. we started writing Just Kate, and we sat on my back deck, and it turned into turned much into this. Turned into this yeah, much it more. a much bigger conversation, much deeper. We realized that our friendship had become all of these conversations and probably always was. Yeah. Um, and and the are. conversations changed, you know? It was always the minutia of life, and our conversations just touched on much deeper things, things that really mattered. You know, we joke that we've talked about everything from hairspray to heaven. Yeah. Um, and That's great. It's been quite, it's been quite a remarkable um, experience in that it has really changed us to the core, those conversations and that power of friendship and the power of being there through it all, no matter what. And as I was writing my piece, or Angela was actually helping me write my piece, um, <laughs> or make my words sound better, um, she wound up having her own reflections of that same time. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it evolved. She then would write just a small piece of what her she, perspective. her perspective. Mm -hmm. And then we had given our draft to an editor and um, she came back and said, I think this would be a more compelling story if you interweave your voices together. Yeah. Telling the same story, which was, and she gave us a sample of that and we loved it. And then we're like, oh my gosh, I oh have to go gosh. back yeah. and rewrite this thing again. Yes. So our little magazine article turned into an eight year writing journey. It's great. Yeah. It is compelling, the exchange. And mm. um, the book is far from sappy. It's very touching um, at times, but there's lots of funniness, yeah. <laughs> lots of humor. <laughs> and, I, and I know Kate, and we're going to meet Kate shortly, and she's filled with mirth yes. <laughs> and um, joy. And, um, and how has um, writing this book uh, helped you in your experience? And, mm. and, and uh, Well, I think Angela and I would both say it was probably the best time of our lives. And that's what we yeah. miss now, yeah. is yeah. sitting next to each side. other. Yeah. Um, most of it was just laughing so hard where um, Angela had to constantly refocus me. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, I just can't get anything good out. And mm. it was just done for the day. And we were living our lives, working, and as we were writing. Yeah, because you have other lives. You're yes. an attorney. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so and I still and work. And I'm, I'm a writer and an adjunct professor at the University of Hartford. My alma mater. And, oh, yeah. wonderful. Creative oh. writing, by the way. Nice. Yeah. That's what Angela's teaching now, is creative yeah. writing at right. UHA, right? Yeah, it's a great school. 
something. Some, some, <laughs> yes, it's pro it's projecting and moving in other directions, which is exciting. And that's you know great, great a great outcropping of just Kate has been all of these new experiences. We've talked to just a host of different groups, from teen groups to women's groups, book clubs, um, faith groups. Um, just to carry out the lessons that we've learned about the power of friendship and how friendship really is a fabulous tool to, um, to permeate acceptance throughout every facet of life and throughout... Uh, and of every person. Of every mm -hmm. single person. Certainly yeah. not just individuals with disabilities, but because we're all different and we're all flawed. I mean, if you take a moment and just take a step back and remember, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to reach out to anybody. I, I wouldn't change a second of the last, certainly my whole life, um, but the last 10 years um, with Angela have been, they've been the best. It yes. changed me who I am as a woman, as a mom. Unfortunately, I'm still a lawyer, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's a disability yeah. too. Exactly, I know, <laughs> I know. Um, but yes, it's ex the, the experience and that those lessons of acceptance and being an equal opportunity friend. I mean, for Kate, that's that's what it's all about. You know, she treats everyone the same, and it's just been such a revelation to us in how we live our lives. Yeah, and watching her to lead by example. For mm -hmm. instance, um, you know, I remember there was a, a girl um, who was working at one of the local Dunkin' Donuts, and she had a lot of piercings, you know, and and um, other kind of body art. And I was, you know, <laughs> just kind of new to me and. Um, Kate asked her questions about it, wanted to know how she spoke um, when there was something in her tongue. And then we'd go in every Saturday morning at like 6 a.m., Kate's an early riser, and she'd be like, Kate, what are you going for? The glaze stick or the chocolate <laughs> stick? And, and she became a part of our lives and this wonderful human being. Yeah. And kind of Kate broke down that barrier for me of yeah. saying, what am I doing with this prejudgment? Here's yeah. this wonderful person. Who looks different or It looks a little different, different and mm -hmm. loved my daughter yeah. um, mm -hmm. and loved her spirit. So, and that happens almost every day. And that's, you know, that's Kate extending friendship to anyone. And, um, and what a learning tool. Um, just so fabulous, yeah. Now, I bet there's lots of people who read this book. Um, you talk about the experience of giving birth um, unexpectedly to a child with a disability. I bet this book is very helpful to other mothers and family members you must meet who must find comfort in this book because of the journey you went through. Where do you go for you know, resources? I mean, you talk about that initial experience of going to different schools and... Um, yeah, and, it, it, and when I had Kate, it was a little bit of a different era because there was no internet. Yeah. So how you heard mm -hmm. about, you know, someone would say, oh, I know somebody who had a child with Down syndrome, let me call them. But now you just go online and you can find a Facebook group or a support group, but anybody who's given who's had a child, um, you know, born differently than expected, whether it be with a health problem or a disability, mm -hmm. um, everybody has their story and their story is meaningful. You know, this happens to be our story. Um, but so many readers are connecting with us on those themes. Children um, who have other disabilities, you know, parents of children with um, autism to cerebral palsy to, we, we've just had a host of of letters and emails and contact on Facebook and Twitter from so many parents, in particular moms, who just, the story resonates because it, it the disability almost doesn't matter. Correct. It was the experience, yeah. though yeah. all these experiences are shared. And it's more of an unexpected blessing yeah. than um, something tragic or something. Exactly, yes. and, to, yes. and to lead, you can have the most joyful of lives. Correct, um, mm -hmm. that's what comes out of the book is that you know, it starts with, oh my God, what am I going to do? This is scary and horrible. But it turns out to be uh, the most miraculous thing. Of oh your my life. gosh, I wouldn't change, as I say, I wouldn't change a moment. And, yeah. and having your best friend kind of side by side with you, too. I knew Angela would always be there for me. And, you know, I say life threw me a bone. It did, that we moved <laughs> 10 minutes apart um, when we moved out of the Manhattan area yeah. and decided to do a change of life. Um, my husband took a job here in Hartford. Yeah. And, um, it was the greatest thing for me. I don't know about yeah, Angela. By far. <laughs> no, by far. And I think that is a great lesson of friendship, is that it's symbiotic. 
So what one person needs, the other willingly gives. And it totally goes both ways. Noel will say, no, no, no. Um, but it totally does. I mean, she has done so many things for me and pulling me no, out of my shell. Really. I used to be very, very shy. And she helped pull me out of my shell. She helped guide me um, with I my own I have children. a little fun once in a Just as a mom, I, you know, a mom raising kids, you have issues. Kate tells me all the time, I have issues. Um, <laughs> You know, this this is this is the way of life. Like there are always challenges, there are always hurdles. No matter, um, you can't fix everything. No, you and Angela's can't. definitely a fixer. I'm a fixer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a big problem solver. So, um, and I'm pretty much a tomorrow's another day to yeah to deal with it. <laughs> but you know what? Person. It's also tough love. Yeah. Like that's the great thing. You know, we each bring something to our friendship, and 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 that's I think what has made it so strong and so lasting, is. Um, yeah, Noelle just doesn't cut me any slack. So she tells it like it is. A little, little tough love is, uh, is really good. And Angela's still my friend, which I have to say <laughs> is probably the biggest burden in her life and the greatest gift to me. <laughs> what, was the, uh, what was the hardest part about writing this um, oh, book? Wow. Were there moments of, um, yeah. of, of uh, pain and, and uh, angst? Uh, or just did it flow? Or were there moments yeah. where you're like, yeah. oh, I can't deal with this right now? Or... Yes. Um, mm -hmm. The beginning, I had never spoken um, to anybody. Um, in the, you know, my feelings, um, you know, 16 years ago when Kate was born, they were private. And um, I wasn't proud of myself for my feelings. And I felt guilty. And, and now I understand they were normal. And, and honest, yeah. And honest. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, speaking about um, there's, you know, Life goes on in the book, and I lost my dad, who was yeah. one of the most important people to me. So that was a very difficult mm -hmm. sure. time for me to write about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of it was just so fun as well. Oh, but th God, those were the yeah. two hard parts. And Angela's um, son, Ryan, she can speak to it, has a, a learning disability. And, you know, and respecting his privacy and also, um, you know, mm -hmm. talking about real challenges was, yeah. was a... Yeah, so there were those there were those hard moments. And interestingly enough, what we learned is you don't sit down and write a book and you start with the first word and end with the last. It's very much a fluid journey where we found, you know, maybe a third of the way through that um, you know, there were a lot of threads that we needed to go back and come back and weave through. So it wasn't just the emotional content on a number of things that was difficult. It was the actual writing a story, a cohesive story that um, tied together all that the tied things. together, that had the depth that we wanted it to have because it really touches on a lot of different um, aspects of our life. We wanted it to have, um, uh, you know, we wanted it to put a window on, into our past to show um, the journey of our friendship from when we were small so that who we are is also where we came from. Um, and, and, and of course the weaving these two voices together um, had its own challenges and yes. to find balance, you know, and to tell it in an authentic and truthful way um, and also be true to ourselves and our own stories and, and how does that all connect together into a cohesive, um, uh, cohesive story. It was, that was a, a big challenge. Yes. Now, um, you two are okay, but I really want to t meet the star of the show, <laughs> um, uh, Kate, of course, we have with us today. So I want you to um, just briefly tell us um, <laughs> where she's at today. She's 16. Yes. And what she's doing. And, okay. You know. So Kate is 16. Um, same personality as when she was born. Yeah. She was born fiery and really funny and um, compassionate and just lovable. Um, Equally, equally, uh, um, uh, makes me crazy, but I love her more than life. Um, she's a junior at Simsbury High School, um, and in fact, she has her best friend with her, Sydney Winnick, here today. Oh, They've so been we're friends. continuing the friendship. Yeah, here. and actually, as they'll tell you, um, Kate and Sid met in first grade. Wow. Um, and Sid is a skinny, curly-haired yeah. Um, young woman, so just like Angela, um, and they've been best friends since first okay. grade. And so they there's just, a sequel here. Yeah, there is, really and, they, awesome. um, and they just started a chapter of Best Buddies at Simsbury High School Wonderful. together, which is um, it's a an affiliate of Special Olympics, um, a friendship based organization. Um, and as Angela and I's friendship has changed our lives for the better, um, Sid and Kate 
I think I can't imagine one of them without the other. Yes, absolutely. Um, Excellent. So um, I want to thank you for um, talking to us. And um, we are going to end the show with, uh, with Kate and Sid. But I encourage everybody to buy this incredible book and um, really be part of its magic. And um, once you meet uh, Kate, you are going to be uh, inspired to buy this book and read it many times. So um, thank you to both of you. Oh, thank, thank you for you. having us. Yeah, thank absolutely. you very much. Good thank luck. You. Thanks, John. And God to bless. you. Yeah, and thank we'll, you for your service. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon again. OK. So, now it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Kate Alex and her best friend, Sid Winnick. Welcome, guys. You guys Hi. are Hi. amazing to be here. Thank you so much. And uh, we just uh, talked to the authors of this great book. And you're mentioned a few times in this book, Kate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's exciting. It, it, was, it was just my body uh, uh, um, aging, but it's not. What about these lemons? What's the story with lemons? Um, the lemons is like when Swiss for the book from Chef Kate started when we, we make the book t Twitter, Whisper the book, and but you've thinking, always loved oh, it's lemons, right? lemons. I love, I love lemons, I love lemons. And it's funny how you can make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> yes. Making life very sweet. Yes. Yes, that's your story, I think. Yeah. And, um, I think um, your life has been pretty incredible, but it's been made more incredible by your friend, Sid. Uh, is it short for Sydney? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, you guys are best friends, like, yes. like Angela and Noel. Yeah, and, we um, met in first grade. First grade, just like your. Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, I like. I know it's funny. I know that. I think about like for the book and it's just kid before, before they are my mom. My mom met her best friend Ursula Martin. The game was like us between me and Sid. We yep. met first grade when we just met between I was I a um. I was at a hospital. I was at a hospital, and I heard somebody came by. It was for the winnick, and he, she's working at Shores Hospital. He went out for there was Sydney Winnick. We, like my family, we call her Sid. Um, and for, so in first grade, we were in the same class, and Kate was out of school for a couple months, and I didn't know where she was. And I found out she was in the hospital, and my mom works there, so I asked her if we could go visit my friend from school. And that's kind of where our friendship began, <laughs> and we've been best friends since. Nice. Talk about your friendship, how it's blossomed and evolved over many years, 15 years. You guys are best buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're best buddies. No, no, we're talking about our friendship. Well, no, yeah. you are best buddies, but speaking yeah. of best buddies, you've started a chapter of Best Buddies. Mm -hmm. uh, Sid, what is that? It's an international organization to create one-to-one -one friendships with people with disabilities or without, and basically our friendship for everyone. So. And it's fun because um, we're going to flash up on the screen uh, some YouTube videos of you guys out on the town um, um, that are I, really fun. I was ask you a question. I wanted to know um, how many how many videos we add to your to your show, like two um, we add two videos between Best Buys one or between the old. Between I've seen a couple ones. of them, so we'll get we'll get one or two up, and they're fun okay. to watch. Okay. And um, what? Why do you think this book is so important for people to to read? What is it? Uh, what does it tell people about? Uh, the the people is about like is somebody who has um the on the own Mrs. Boom. Like I have it. I think I do have it. My mom like she's saying like, three times in the book saying like, this is my third one. This is my this is my third one. This is my third one. Like, I, she surprised that I when I first time, first time I have a down down on on my sister room, and I like I think my, I thinking about when when the people who has it, we my mom found that my mom found that a video who has a down with this room. So and um, anything that I have to have we make, I make the book. 
is about, between my name, between... So what are people learning from the book? The people are learning the book is like, who is like only way to, for the people between the books must be like how they make your books, but how about your own daughter or child? I'm thinking uh, maybe like how who has a dome with this room. And, and it's about friendship. How about, how about friendship? Yeah. Your friendship, I think, uh, rings loud and clear in this book. And um, why is she such an important friend to you, Sid? I just like how I learned at such a young age that like the way she looks at people is how everyone should look at people because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And I've definitely learned that from her. So. <laughs> And you think you'll be friends for a long, long time? For like sure. Your, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, weddings and school, college, uh, and, we, and, we, we, and boyfriends, Mary, yeah. and, and hair. Do you talk about all that stuff? Um, also this one. Also my mom. Also my sisters. Oh, okay. You got two sisters. Yeah, I have two sisters yeah. between after three so after my mom had my other sister first place. My mom had me second. Second daughter, we we come from a new Shosi, and my dad he found the new shop in Hartford. My mom is working at Nuxi in Manhattan. I was thinking about how, thinking about why does it do that between we move to Sisbury Concord okay. before I have my youngest sister. Now. Um, you uh, are in the book quite a bit, and was that a fun experience <laughs> yeah, to be part cool. of it? Yeah, so now you're going on your book tour, and I'm so glad that you, uh, <laughs> you made it to, uh, to my neck of the woods. And um, talk about um, how people can get involved in the Best Buddies program. Well, at school, it depends if they have a chapter at the school or not, and if they don't, they should probably make one, because I think it's going to be a really awesome thing at Simsbury. How does and it work? It's you, well, it's based online as well. So you have like friendship updates, but you're matched with someone. And it requires hanging out with your buddy twice a month, which should just be a normal thing to do. And then you have group activities once a month, and those can be bowling or a party, dance, whatever. So we've well, already had some events. The most important thing I want to know is what's with the what's with the robe. <laughs> I thinking about when <laughs> my mom like she was also uh, uh for a couple of times she has like spring place in my house recent and my mom and my dad they also they also call me session. Um like we call it the robe it's like I love the blue rope with flowers. It's the thing to do from you wear all as the far time. as Kate. It's like a good rope. Now you are everywhere now. You're you're um, on the altar at church. I see you. And yes. You do a great job. What other activities do you do? Um, also, I do holding the book, doing bells, <laughs> holding the cross. Yeah. And usually it's a bit of candles. What about There's outside of church? What else do you do? Do you have activities at school you do? Um, uh, yes, for school, also I do math, chorus, miss repair, miss acting, and Ooh. cooking, and a big shop. What do you want to do when you grow up? Do you want to be a famous actress? <laughs> Maybe? Yes. A star? Well, you're already a star. Yes, I yeah. am. Yes. <laughs> Sid, what do you want to do? Uh, most likely go into special education. Interesting. Great. Well, you both have a, uh, a bright future. <laughs> and Kate, you're a blessing and mm -hmm. a joy to know. And I'm so glad that our, uh, our uh, paths crossed. And um, this is really an incredible book about friendship. And I think that your guys, you guys are going to need to write a sequel <laughs> okay. called Just Kate and Sid. Uh, <laughs> the story continues because you're going to have uh, lots of uh, stories to tell. Um, so I want to thank you both for being here. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. Uh, wish you well, and I'm going to see you soon. I hope. <laughs> and um, just Kate is available for sale by Noel Alex and Angela Martin. A story of friendship, hope, love, and joy. And uh, I thank you so much uh, for joining me for this episode of Office Hours. 
guys, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks Thank a million. You. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.